So um, yeah, I want to basically tag on um, the very last thing that uh, Martin explained with respect to modifying the parameter lambda in the um, basis, basis expanded uh, linear regression model. For this, we have prepared a notebook that you can find on your respective course pages here under um, today's date. And um, that is here. So I will basically take this opportunity to turn this into a short tutorial on how you might um, interactively explore such questions with, uh, with Python, like what exactly happens when we vary lambda. So in this notebook here, we have defined the data set that looks kind of like uh, what we just saw on the slides. It doesn't match exactly, but uh, we have uh, these uh, six points here of X and Y values in a, a similar pattern as we saw. And then we will define this um, basis expanded regression model that we saw. So we, are, we have um, a weight vector with six components. We have the first component is kind of an absolute value and the um, subsequent components are multiplied with uh, increasing powers of x. And um, of course, this uh, you could also say is multiplied with x to the power of zero, right? So, um, and we will implement this as a basic um, Python class. I'm choosing to do it this way here also because this is uh, the, way, uh, the way machine learning models are very commonly implemented. So you will, uh, for example, if you use scikit-learn, you will see objects that have uh, predicts and fit functions. So this is also how we do it. I'm leaving out the fit function here for now because we will go into a bit more detail on that shortly. Um, so this class has a constructor that takes uh, two hyperparameters to set up the model. The first is the degree of the polynomial, which uh, has the default value six as in the example. And the second is the regularization parameter lambda that we will use later. So for now, all this constructor then does is store these uh, parameters and it uh, keeps a weight vector as a, as a class attribute. And this is initialized to um, uh, normally distributed random values. So if you pass only this size parameter, it generates random values with mean zero and standard deviation one. And uh, it generates one more than the degree of the polynomial is. So if this is six, then we get uh, seven components in the weight vector, which as you see from the formula, we do need seven components. Next, we have a helper function called basis expand that takes a vector of x values and uh, basically adds on all of the powers of the polynomial that we want to use here. So to illustrate how this works, um, let's maybe do a quick drawing. I hope this is visible. So um, let's say we input uh, these uh, six x values here. So that would mean we have a vector of uh, x1 to x6. And, um, oh, okay, I also have this cell down here. So these are the actual values of- Michael, Michael, if you, if you already wrote something, I can't see it. Oh, interesting. Hang on, then um, we will fix that. That will take a second. This is some odd thing that keeps happening with these screen shares, but luckily this can be fixed by sharing my OBS window instead. I have to get the window size right, otherwise it will look strange. Oh, no, this is the wrong direction. Okay, well, then we will have a bit more space. It doesn't matter. Okay, and then I will switch to a different window. It should look more or less the same. There we are. Okay, so now you should see me write stuff here, right? Yes. Okay, nice. Okay, um, right, so uh, here we see the, the, the X vector, like the, the X values from this coordinate system only. And um, this is the um, second term that we use in this basis expand function, which is a one dimensional array of the numbers from the zero to six. And then um, we take the axis to 
all of these powers simultaneously, essentially by passing these two arguments to the NP dot power function. So we get an array like this. And um, what this is, and this is what I was trying to draw earlier, is uh, we input a vector with the components x1 to x6. And um, after this uh, power, we have a six by seven matrix where um, the first column, uh, okay, I see we turn this into the column vector. So let's quickly, oh, okay, no, that was correct. Anyway, we, we, uh, we turn this into a matrix where the first column is every X raised to the zero power. So X1 to the zero to X6 to the zero. So those are these, uh, 1.0 values that you see always in the uh, first column here. The next column has the same um, numbers raised to the first power and so on all the way to the sixth power. So this is what the result of this basis expand function looks like. So why are we doing this? Uh, so that we can do this entire multiplication in uh, vectorized uh, fashion all at once, which is way more efficient than would be writing a, a materialized loop in Python here. So we want to use this uh, dot product operator to evaluate this entire uh, sum for not just a single point, but for the entire data set at a time. That's the, the motivation right behind this essentially. So in order to do this, we um, transpose this matrix of X values. So the um, result of the, of the transpose then uh, straightforward, right? So we switch rows and columns. That means now the first column has the uh, first uh, point raised to all the subsequent powers. So this is then x1 to the zero and this is x1 to the six. And the last column has x6 to the zeroth power and down to x6 to the sixth power. And then we multiply on the left the weight vector, which uh, has seven components. So uh, we can draw it like this. This would be W0 to W6. And that means uh, the result of the multiplication is again a vector with six components, which is the number of columns in this matrix. And this value here has uh, W0 times X1 to the zeroth power, which is just one, of course, plus the W1 times uh, X1 to the first power, which is just X1 and so on. So this is the evaluation of this sum for a single point. And this is the evaluation of the sum for the next point. So we had, uh, let's say X1 is this and X2 is this and, and so on. And we do this for all the six points that we have. Okay. So much for that. So this is what our model function does during prediction, right? Um, do the basis expansion on X and uh, multiply it with a weight vector. Then uh, in order to actually fit this model to the data, we need an error measure. We are going to use the same error measure that we just saw on the slides, which is the um, residual sum of, uh, sum of squares with the regularization term that uh, measures the magnitude of the weight vector by multiplying it with itself. And in Python, we can implement it like this. So the RSS reads basically exactly like in the sum. We even use the, the so we, we pass an instance of this model class here to this function, and then we just use its predict function to give us the uh, Y values for the axis we pass in here. We subtract this from the uh, truth Y values that we also pass in and uh, square the result. So uh, this means then we get here a vector of squared uh, differences between x's and y's. And with this dot sum, we sum them all together and get a single scalar. And um, for the regularization term, we can also write it basically the same way that it's uh, shown in the formula. We, we take the uh, dot product of uh, w with itself. And finally, we add RSS. Uh, with the lambda parameter of the model times the regularization term. And that is our final loss or error measure that we use here. Next, um, in order to minimize this measure, we basically want to fill in this uh, fit uh, method of the model. 
And uh, here we are going to use uh, the optimizer from the SciPy package, so we don't have to worry about uh, doing the derivative ourselves and so on. And um, this, uh, under the hood, by default, uses an optimization algorithm called uh, BFGS, which is the initials of the inventors, I think Broiden, Fletcher, Goldfarb, Shano, um, which is um, slightly more efficient than the gradient descent that we treat in the lecture, which, because it uses also higher derivatives. Um, yeah, and with simple models like this, it converges extremely quickly. So this is a good choice here, and it can even estimate the derivatives, and we don't have to worry about all of this. So all we have to give this model is the uh, optimization objective, which we define here in a slightly complicated way that I will get to in a second, and an initial guess for the um, uh, argument of the of the optimization objective that we are trying to uh, find where, where this function is minimized. And then we can pass an option to print out the progress, which I've set to false here. Um, yeah, this function basically takes the value of the uh, argument of the optimization objective and we at the same time want to update the, the model uh, with this new weight vector while it's being optimized so we do this here and then we just return the loss at this new weight vector and uh, finally we uh, override this um, stop function that we defined up here with this uh, actual fit function that we are going to use Next, uh, we will add a method to plot the points along with the, the model that we have fit. So we again do a simple scatter plot. Then we um, define the points where we will plot the, the curve. This will be just 100 evenly spaced uh, x values between slightly less than the first uh, uh, point here and slightly more than the, than the last point here. And then we plot uh, this against the model predictions at each of these uh, 100 x values that we've generated up here. And we fit the uh, y axis to not plot too much outside the point cloud that we have. And then in the title, we want to see um, the actual weight factor that we've, uh, that we've optimized. So this is shown here in the example already. And then we want uh, the final value of the loss function. So when we do this, um, with a model initialized with the default values, which um, gives us a polynomial degree of six and a lambda parameter of zero. Then we get this curve, which looks a bit different than on the slide because the points are not exactly the same. And this uh, reaches a loss of exactly zero. So that means um, this lambda is uh, zero anyway, so this, this term doesn't matter. And since we, um, since so the curve goes exactly through each of these points, we get a loss of zero from the uh, RSS term. Finally, um, this shows how you can quickly experiment with uh, changing these values using the interactive widgets in um, IPython. These are in a package called IPyWidgets. And um, the main component is a function called interact, which takes another function and then uh, what is essentially a description of how the arguments of this function should be uh, manip manipulated by uh, user interface elements. And uh, here we have defined this function run, which takes the parameters lambda and degree, then defines um, or instantiates a model given these parameters, fits it to the data. So these x's and y's are the global val variables that we defined all the way up there. It's still the same set. And then it calls our plot function that we just defined on the result. And then here we just say we want lambda to be uh, manipulated with a floating point slider that goes in set values of 0 0.0 to 1 from 0 to 1.0 and starts at 0. Um, and then we can even use uh, LaTeX to formulate the description here by putting dollars around this. But then look, we get this nice lambda here. And we want to manipulate the degree of the polynomial with the integer slider that goes from 0 to 12. And uh, yeah, when we run this, then we will immediately get the new plot when we change the value up here. So for example, if I set the degree of the polynomial to 0, then we have uh, no um, parameter that interacts with the uh, x values in any way. So that means that the 
W parameter that we end up fitting is the average of the Y values. And that is 0.44 in this case. And then of course we do have a non-zero loss because there are definitely residuals here. And as we saw in the lecture already, as we increase the degree of the polynomial, we fit the points better and better. This uh, six degree polynomial fits perfectly, but it's undesirable due to overfitting. And by increasing the regularization parameter, we can control this. And uh, okay, I'm going to do it in slightly smaller steps by using the arrow keys and we see here, we has uh, lambda is no longer zero. We no longer fit perfectly because the minimum of our objective function is no longer a curve that goes exactly through all the points. And um, as we increase it, we see the components of our weight vector become smaller and the curve becomes simpler also. If we increase lambda quite a bit, we get something that looks more like a polynomial of lower degree. If we increase it enough, eventually we get something that looks like a straight line, even though there's still a slight curve in here. And the parameters of W tend to get very small. Okay, yeah, so this, so much for that. Um, this is um, a general approach that I often find useful when thinking about these uh, machine learning concepts to just uh, put together a quick notebook and see if that helps me understand how this stuff works. And I invite you to experiment with this one and come up with examples of your own. <laughs>